Hola amigos, bienvenidos. Hey guys, welcome back. It's another great lesson here on the Language Tutor Spanish series. Well, it's episode 59, and I told you last time that we're going to start subjunctive, and we did start subjunctive, and I also told you that we would be following that up with some other subjunctive lessons. And so this is lesson two of four on the subjunctive tense, okay? So I hope you've been going over those conditions of when do I use the subjunctive tense and how do I use the subjunctive tense. So if you're here, that means you're probably ready for it. So I hope that's the case, all right? Well, it's time to jump in to the imperfect subjunctive. Yes, the imperfect subjunctive. Now, if you remember back what the imperfect was, we, we talked about things in the past with the imperfect. I'm talking about things like, uh, you know, that were ongoing in the past, uh, our feelings, uh, the weather, time, those sort of things that were sort of ongoing in the past. You, you used to do something, okay? Well, we're going to take sort of that ongoing feeling and we're going to mix it with the conditions of the subjunctive and we're going to make imperfect subjunctive. Yeah. All right. So let me just help you merge these two subjects together. Okay. So first of all, um, you know, there's things that happened in the past. All right. If you're talking about things that happened in the past and we have two subjects, all right, that would be a good example. So let me, let me give an example here. Uh, so I wanted her to come to my house. Now you see, I wanted, that was, that was ongoing. That feeling was ongoing, right? So I wanted her, now I've changed the subject, to come to my house. That's a good one, all right? Now, and and at, the, at the end, I'm going to put all these into Spanish with the per, imperfect subjunctive so you can see what those look like, okay? Here's another one. He was scared she wouldn't be at the meeting. He was scared that she wouldn't be at the meeting. It sounds like it was important. So he was scared that she wouldn't be at the meeting. He was scared that's ongoing feeling that is kind of ongoing in the past, and that feeling in the past. <clears throat> and the, we changed to a different subject talking about her, she. All right, let's give you another one. I was going to send her a check so she could pay her rent. Okay, I was going, that was my intent in the past. It was that ongoing intention to do something. All right, so that, that's kind of the imperfect mode. But I was going to send her a check so she could pay her rent. We changed the subject, okay? And it's, it's all in the past. All right, now let's look at a different condition. Okay, what you currently think of past events would be a good way to use the imperfect subjunctive. It's what you're currently thinking about something in the past. All right, so here's, here's a good one. Um, it's good that he started college. See, that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling that right now. You know, it's a good thing. I still think that. It's good that he started college in the past, something he did. All right, <clears throat> now let's talk about another condition. Let's talk about doubts and wishes. Remember we used that word ojalá for wishes and, and desires when we talked about subjunctive in the last episode. Okay, let's bring that word in. You know, we're going to use it again, um, but we're saying something like this. Um, I wish we were going shopping. You know, you, I got to do my homework. Well, I wish we were going shopping instead. That's something I'm currently wishing um, and it's sort of were going. It's kind of what would be going on now if if I didn't have to do my homework, right? Right, kids? Okay. Another good condition for using imperfect subjunctive are if phrases. You know, if something were the case, I would do this. We can use the imperfect subjunctive for that. Here's a good one. If I were rich, right, I would help the poor. If I were rich, I would help the poor. So we're talking about sort of a, a distant condition. That's, that's a good way to use this, okay? Um, also, we might use it with suggestions 
and request. All right. I would like a lot of money. Yes, I would. Wouldn't we all? I would like a lot of money. That's something that we is, is kind of uh, it's, it's something that's not really the case. Um, it, it's kind of a request, something that we would like. Um, so if sometimes you might also say, oh, I would like uh, in your ordering in a restaurant, you can use this as well. It's, um, it's sort of a, I would like, I, it's not necessarily true, but this is what I would like scenario, okay? All right, now, I've given you some conditions of how we can use it. Now let's talk about how we put it all together. Now before, when we talked about subjunctive, we talked about using that first person root, that first person present tense translation like tengo or vengo um, to establish that as our root for the subjunctive and then put the subjunctive ending on it. Okay, we're going to do the same thing, but we're not going to use the first person. Since this is kind of ongoing in the past, we're actually going to use the third person plural in the preterite, right? We're going to use the third person plural preterite down there at the bottom right in the preterite, okay? That's the one that we have to take as our root for the imperfect subjunctive, okay? Now, we're going to take that root, and what we're going to do, remember, it usually ends with ron, like empezaron, right? Hicieron. We're going to take off that ron, R-O-N, at the ending of it. We're going to take that off, and that is going to be our root, okay? Now, once we get that, we're going to add some endings to it. Now, I want to go ahead and tell you something. This is kind of strange. But in this tense, we actually have two sets of endings. And yes, you can use either one. So I'm going to show you examples with both sets of endings today, okay? So let's put our chart up here and let's look at those endings. First of all, ra, R-A, up in the yo form. The next one is ras, R-A-S. After that is Ra, again, R-A. Then over on the right, we've got nosotros form would be Ramos. And then you can probably guess the next two, Rais and Ran. Now, those are our endings we're going to use to put on that third person preterite, plural, preterite verb. Okay, I know you're going, wow, this is getting crazy here. And it's all right, we'll figure it out. Okay, now, here, here are a couple examples for you. Uh, the yo forms in the imperfect subjunctive. For to speak, for example, hablara. Okay, so we took that third person preterite hablaron, we took off the ron and we added ra to it. So hablara. The verb hacer to do or to make in this tense. We've got hicieron down here. The third person plural preterite hicieron took off that ron and now we're putting ra hiciera. There's a yo form of to do or to make in this tense. Let's do one more. Let's do uh, translate, okay? Traducir, traducir. Now in the past tense, I'm going to take that third, probably it's T-R-A-D-U-J, all right? So it's going to be tradujera, tradujera. All right, I know this is a little strange, but don't worry, you'll get it. Now I want to give you the other set of endings, Okay. And so you can sort of put these down and then take one, get it down, take the other, get it down. You can use either set, okay? The other set of endings is going to look like this. We'll clear our chart and we'll put se, S-E. And then for the tu form, we're going to put ses, S-E-S. And then down here at the bottom left, we're going to put se again. I bet you're starting to go, okay, I'm getting this pattern here because I've seen this before. All right, up in the nosotros form, Semos, right? You've seen these ER endings. Seis and sen. Those are our endings. So now let's look at those verbs again that we did a minute ago. We said hablara. Now it's hablase. We said hiciera. Now it's hiciese. And that translate is now tradujese. Okay. Now that you're kind of understanding 
the verb, the subjunctive verb part of it. We need to put all this in the context, okay? So let's put it all into context. Let's go back to those examples that we did at the beginning and pull some of those up and let's put them in Spanish two different ways because I want to use both endings for you, okay? I want you to see how both of these work. All right, go back to things that happened in the past. I wanted her to come to my house, all right? That's what I was wanting in the past. I wanted her to come to my house. Now, let's put this into Spanish. Quería, okay, so that was that. Ia, ongoing in the past. Quería que, we're still going to use que, subjunctive, right? Quería que ella viniera a mi casa. Okay, viniera, because we have that vinieron, third person, plural, preterite, all those Bs. Okay, third person, plural, preterite. And we took off the ron and we put a ra, and now we've got a quería que ella viniera a mi casa. Now I'm going to change that viniera to the other way. Quería que ella viniese a mi casa. Viniera, viniese, you can choose whichever one you want to say. Okay, again, get comfortable with one, pull in the other one. Now let's go to that next sentence we used a while ago. He was scared she wouldn't be at the meeting. Okay, and that's what he was worried about, and it was ongoing. To be scared is to have fear, which is tener miedo. So let's put it in the past. Tenía miedo de, we always have fear of something. Okay, tenía miedo de que, subjunctive que, ella no estuviera en la reunión. Okay, estuviera en la reunión. Now let's throw in that other one. We see estuviera is now going to become, see if you can figure this out before I tell you. Estuviese. Estuviese en la reunión. Okay, that's the other way we can say it. All right, let's bring up that next example we talked about. I was going to send her a check so she could pay her rent. Okay, I was going to send her a check so she could pay her rent. All right, we're going to use that so is in order to, para que, and that sort of switches the subject into the subjunctive. All right, let's put it in there. So, I was going is iba a, air plus a plus infinitive in the past, iba a enviarle un cheque para que, in order that, pudiera pagar el alquiler, the rent. Okay, let me say that again. Iba a enviarle un cheque para que pudiera pagar el alquiler. All right, now we're going to change that. Pudiera. See if you can figure out what we're going to change it to. Pudiese. Pudiese. There you go. All right, now let's bring in another example. When we're talking about what we think of events, okay? It's good that he started college. Remember that example? It's good that he started college. So we're just going to say it's good. Es bueno that, que, there's that subjunctive transition to another clause, right? Que es bueno que él, now let's think about this. We're going to use empezar, the verb to begin, empezar. Put that past verb up there, that third person past verb. Okay, you're probably figuring this out. Que él empezara la Universidad. Es bueno que él empezara la universidad. Now let's change it to the other way you can say it. Empezase. Que él empezase la universidad. Okay? Move on to that next one. Doubts, wishes. Let's bring in ojalá. Okay? Told you we're going to use that again. Wishing something would happen. I wish we were going shopping. I got to do my homework. I wish we were going shopping. Ojalá que, there's our transition word, fuéramos de compras. Ojalá que fuéramos de compras. All right, so remember here in the, in the past is that, that third person is fueron. Okay, all right, it's, it's the same as ser in the past, isn't it? Okay, ojalá que fuéramos de compras. Now let's change it to that other way. Ojalá que Fuésemos de compras. All right. 
Now, while we're talking about this example, and I have this one up here, I want to tell you a little grammar note really fast. The nosotros form of imperfect subjunctive, okay, they're going to have an accent on the vowel that comes right before the subjunctive ending. Okay, so that's why you see fueramos and fuesemos. You see that accent on the E because if it's, if it's that accent, the vowel right before the subjunctive ending, we've got to put an accent on that, okay? So that's why you see that. All right, let's keep going with our examples. We're almost done here. If phrases. If I were rich, I would help the poor. Don't we all wish we were rich, right? If I were rich, I would help the poor. Si fuera rico, si fuera rico, ayudaría a los pobres. I would help, and we have to use the personal a, a los pobres, because we're talking about the verb being done to people. Si fuera rico, ayudaría a los pobres. Now we can change that to the other way. Si fuese rico, ayudaría a los pobres. Okay? Now let's look at the next type, which is suggestions, requests, things that we would like, that we might be requesting. I, I would like uh, this, or you're telling somebody I would like this. All right. Um, so I would like a lot of money. We used that a while ago. I would like a lot of money. Quisiera mucho dinero. Quisiera mucho dinero. Now, I can, I'm going to change it to that other way. Quisiese mucho dinero. Quisiese. Okay? Now, amigos, that's how we do the imperfect subjunctive. So I want you to keep practicing that. And again, I suggest take it step by step. Get those conditions down. Come up with English sentences that that let you practice, you know, that, that demonstrate those conditions. And even go on some of these great grammar sites that have lots of examples and check those out. And then bring in one type of subjunctive ending and then start working on the other. Because you'll hear on both. All right. In the meantime, let me know how you're doing with your Spanish adventures. Shoot me a voicemail. I, I may even feature it on the podcast and encourage other people in their adventure and learning Spanish because I'm hearing a lot of great feedback. Just shoot that to me at dannyevans3371 at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Keep on practicing, mis amigos, and I'll see you next time on The Language Tutor. I step it on. Friends, thanks for watching The Language Tutor. If you have a question for me, feel free to leave it in the comment section below the video. And please click subscribe and the notification bell so that you'll never miss any of our language lessons.